Hi, welcome to RARMAP. Today I'm doing a series of videos on functions. In this video, it says find all the real values for which f of x equals zero. Notice that both of my examples say y equal, and that's because y and f of x are two ways of saying the same thing. In each case, I take what is to the right of the equal sign and set it equal to zero. All right, so for this first one, I will say, 3x cubed minus 25x squared minus 18x equals 0. Now, this 3 right there means there are three zeros. I'm looking for three solutions because real solutions come in pairs of two. Sorry, imaginary answers come in pairs of two. I might have one real solution or three real solutions. Um, but I have to have at least one real solution. I'm going to notice that every term has an x. So I'm going to start by dividing everything by x. If this 25 were a 24, I would also divide through by 3, but it is a 25, which means I cannot divide through by the three, because I don't want to give myself fractions. Fractions are going to make this process harder. Next, because there, if I didn't have, this poor 25 is making everything harder. If I didn't have that term, if there was a variable only in one term, I would isolate and solve. I would add the 18 over, isolate, solve, be done. As soon as there is a variable in two terms, you have to factor. Because this 3 is not a 1, I'm going to use AC. I'm going to multiply 3 times negative 18, which is negative 54, and look for two numbers that add up to negative 25. I'm going to start with my 1 in times 54, um, mainly because I want to figure out my positives and negatives. Because 54 is negative, I know one of them is negative. And because I have to add up to a negative, I know my big factor has to be negative. 1 minus 54 is not 25. 2 and negative 27. That does work. Now, if this was a 1, I would be done. I am not. I have to now replace. The whole point of what I just did is I found two numbers that can replace my 25. 2 minus 27 will replace that 25. So x... 3x squared plus 2x minus 27x minus 18 equaling 0. These two are the same. I took a trinomial and turned it into a four-term polynomial. They are equivalent. I can now factor by grouping because anytime you have an even number of terms, you can factor by grouping. I can take an x out of my first two terms and a negative 9 out of the second two terms. If I take out an x... I have 3x plus 2. If I take out a negative 9, I have a 3x plus 2. I still have two terms. It is always good to double check the number of terms you have. I have a term here, one term. I have a term here, two terms. If I look at my two terms, parentheses force a term, if I look at my two terms, they each have a common 3x plus 2. If I factor a 3x plus 2 out of each of those terms, in the first term, I'm left with an x. In the second term, I'm left with a minus 9. Okay, then the only way things multiply out to be 0 is if one of them is equal to 0. There is nothing that say if, says if two numbers multiply to be 10, one of them has to be 10. Nothing. But if two numbers multiply to be zero, one of them has to be zero. Zero is the only number that that's true for. So we know for a fact either x is zero, 3x plus 2 is zero, or x minus 9 is zero, which means 3x is negative 2 when x is negative 2 thirds, x is 9. So those are my three answers, zero, negative 2 thirds, or 9. For my second example, 
I have negative 7x squared minus 35x plus 42 equals 0. For this one, I can factor out a negative 7 because there's a negative 7 here, a negative 7 here, and a negative 7 here. I end up with x squared plus 5x minus 6. But I'm going to go and now divide both sides by negative 7. I can only do that because I have an equation. If I didn't have an equation, I couldn't do that. x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. I now have a trinomial where the first term is 1. This is so much simpler than what I just did. I look for two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. I'm going to start off with the two numbers again because 1 times 6 is 6, but I need a negative 6. So either the 1 is negative or the 6 is negative. Because I have to add up to a positive 5, the 1 has to be negative. Negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Negative 1 pl plus 6 is a positive 5. This is actually the right one. In a trinomial where a is 1, it's x minus 1 times x plus 6. Once again, I have the same thing, x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x plus 6 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to 1 or negative 6, and we are done. All right, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you on the next video.